In this presentation, we will record an advanced payment, sometimes called a customer deposit, in QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. We can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, going to the open windows list. What we're going to do now is record a customer deposit or an advanced payment. This is going to be a little outside the normal process that would happen when we think of the customers. If we look at the customers uh, section of the home page here, we see the flow chart normally goes that either we have an invoice, we do the work, uh, and we invoice the client, possibly with a service company, say we're a bookkeeper, bookkeeper or law firm, and we do work and we invoice the clients for the work that was done, and then we're going to receive payment uh, sometime in the future, and then we're going to deposit that payment. That would be the normal process, or say we're something like a restaurant, or in our case we're selling guitars, and we receive payment at the same point in time that the service is done, then we typically will uh, receive payment here and make the deposit. Now there's another scenario that could happen in terms of just accrual accounting, and that would be we could get payment, we could get paid before we do the work. So the three ways that this could basically happen is we, the, the, when we do the work is what drives revenue recognition under an accrual basis. We should be recognizing revenue when we earn it. We earn it when we do the work, either when we do the bookkeeping or law service, if we're, if we're a law firm or a bookkeeping firm, or uh, when we deliver the inventory, if we are a merchandising company. So w w the difference then when we receive the work and when we get paid is going to result in some kind of differences in terms of how we've recorded. Three ways that can happen. We do the work before we get uh, paid, in which case we have an invoice and it's going to go through accounts receivable. Or we do the work at the same time that we get paid in which case we're going to increase cash or undeposited funds at the same time as we record the revenue. Or it's possible we get paid before we do the work. Now, this last one is the most unusual one because in traditional type of businesses, we have to do the work at least at the same time or we do the work before and then bill. So if you think about a bookkeeping firm or law firm, it's mostly the case that we're going to do the work and then bill the client for the work done. But it's possible we can say, hey, this is a big job. And, uh, you know, we want a down payment. We want a deposit on the work before we uh, start doing the work, in which case we would get the money before we did the work. And uh, we could see this with merchandising companies, too, if we were to, uh, you know, provide merchandise. Typically, we can, we can think of a store situation where we get paid at the same point in time and we provide the goods. But it's possible for us to say, especially for larger pieces of merchandise, for us, we sell guitars. We might say, hey, you know, this is a large piece of a guitar. Of guitar. We're going to custom order it. We would like a down payment or at least or full payment up front as we order the guitar. In which case, we would get paid before uh, we do the work. And um, so, so these is a scenario. It's going to be more and more common as we do like service items, like a newspaper company is going to get paid before they provide the newspaper. Any kind of of application will typically have that where we get paid. Um, we're going to have a subscription-based application where we provide the application and payment usually happens before we provide the application. So that's what we're going to happen here. We're going to sell guitars and we're going to get paid before we sell the guitar. So if we look at our flowchart, then it doesn't quite work. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can record this. One is that we can record a journal entry and the journal entry should be doing something like this. We should be increasing. Let's go to a, a report for we're going to go to Reports up top, we're going to go to Company and Financial, and let's go to the Balance Sheet. So we're going to go to the Balance Sheet, and just think about the accounts that should be affected here. If we go to the Customer Balance Sheet, we're going to change the dates from 010119 to 123119, and say OK. So here's going to be our Balance Sheet. Now you would think about what would happen. Well, if we got paid, then cash should go up, or undeposited funds, if we haven't yet deposited it. And then the other side should be going to, it can't go to revenue, which is what would happen if we sold the, the goods or services at that point in time, because we, we haven't done it yet. We haven't earned it yet. And typically it will go to an account called an, uh, unearned revenue. So we'll call it account, and that's going to be a liability account because either we owe the money back or we um, owe the service. We owe the guitar. 
So we pay off the liability, hopefully with the guitar and keep the money that we're getting today. So we're going to pay the liability in the future with a guitar. That would be the normal journal entry. Now, if we do that, however, we can do that with a journal entry. We can actually go up here and just go to a uh, company and make journal entry. And, and this screen, we can debit unearned revenue or the checking account and we can credit the uh, un, uh, we can debit the checking account or undeposited funds and credit the uh, account for unearned revenue increasing the liability that's one way we can do it or we can try to do that through registers and enter that transactions now there's a problem with that though and that is that uh, w when we get paid usually it goes through uh, accounts receivable which is tracked in, in our receivable ledger like there's no if I record a journal entry we could put the customer name there but it doesn't it doesn't tie it together as easily as if we can use these icons so if I go back to the home page if we can set these up using these forms then that's that's going to be easier for us to do and it's going to be easier for us to track in a customer ledger which is what we really want to do so another kind of workaround that we can do then is to actually record the receive payment here before we make the invoice. Now what this is going to do when we do this is it's going to track everything in the subsidiary ledger to accounts receivable. So remember if I go back to the balance sheet and we go to accounts receivable here, there's a subsidiary ledger for that. If we go to the reports and I go to the uh, customers and receivables, and we go to the customer balance detail report then this report is going to support uh, you know that number by customer and that's going to be really useful because we can see things being tick and tied out I would like to see the payment that we're getting now that we're paying now tied out to the invoice that we're going to invoice in the future when we deliver the guitar so it, it's useful f to run this report to have it go through here now to do this however we're going to end up making a negative receivable which isn't normally the case that we would want to see. It's kind of not, not exactly proper accrual accounting to have a negative receivable. We, w we should have a liability, a positive liability, not a negative receivable. However, from a tracking standpoint in terms of the customer balance detailed report, it's really nice to have the negative receivable that we can then tie together with the invoice on this same document. And so that's, that's the way we're going to, to work through this here. We're going to make this deposit, create a negative receivable, and as long as we get paid by the end of the month, I mean, if we deliver the guitar by the end of the month, that negative receivable will go away and it's just a timing difference and it won't be a problem. Uh, if, however, we have, we have to create financial statements as of the end of the time period and give those to somebody else, then we're going to want to make an adjusting entry as of the, the end of the month to do the proper thing. If we haven't yet delivered the guitar and we have negative receivables, we'll take the negative receivable out of here and we will post it uh, as a liability as an adjusting journal entry. So this is going to be the process we're going to do. This is a practical way to track this information, this type of transaction within QuickBooks, although it's not the, the most accrual based correct way and the, the way we would typically learn in uh, making journal entries for financial accounting. So from a practical standpoint, it works well. We can make an adjustment at the end of the time period and we can track and match out those uh, transactions in the customer balance detail uh, so that's why we would do it so there's pros and cons to any way you can set this up there's a couple different ways you could set this up but this is a nice way to be able to match out the customer balance detail so we're going to close this out and what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the home i'm going to close out the journal entry and the close this out and we're going to go home and we're going to say that we're going to receive payment, even though we haven't made an invoice. We're going to receive a payment. And then the payment's going to be from Anderson Guitar. So if we select the drop down, it's the first one, or we can type in there Anderson Guitars, and it'll populate for us. And then we'll tab through it. Now we're going to say that we're going to get 250. 250. And it's going to be a check. We're going to say the check was on 216. So I'm going to select the plus couple times to get to 216 a few times more than a couple I guess and then we're gonna say that the check number is gonna be for 5243 now note that there's no normally we have an invoice here that we would check with it there is no invoice because we haven't had an invoice yet so this is unusual but uh, what this is gonna do is we're gonna have the 250 and this will increase the um, 
undeposited funds, that's what a customer payment does, and then the other side is going to go to accounts uh, receivable, typically decreasing accounts receivable. It's going to decrease accounts receivable for Anderson Guitars, even though Anderson Guitars doesn't owe us any money, which means it's going to make it look like we owe Anderson Guitar money, so, which, is, which is kind of the case. We owe them the money back or we owe them the, uh, the guitar. So we're going to save and close this and see what happens. Now note we get this pop-up. Uh, a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer account. So we're going to create a credit on the overpayment that we're going to have to apply. So we're going to say OK. And then we have a credit on the account. And then if we go back to the balance sheet in the open windows, we can see the accounts receivable. If I double click on it, we got this negative 250. So that negative 250, if I close this back out, the total balance is 965. Let's go to the report again. Reports, customers receivables, customer balance detail. And if we go to Anderson, the, the total is that is that 965. Back to the balance sheet in the open windows. That matches the 965. Back to the customer balance detail in the open windows. And then the Anderson then here. Uh, is a negative number. So again, this is not exactly proper for cruel, accrual accounting, meaning what really should be is this total should be increased by that 250 and we should have a liability, us owing Anderson 250. But if we did so, we wouldn't be able to track that liability with the customer detail as easily. And therefore, this works well for us to be able to, to say, okay, I want to match this out in the future with what will happen, which is we will invoice or, cre or create a sales receipt in the future, and we'll be able to match this out just as we would other way. We have this matching out invoice payment, invoice payment. Here we have payment and then invoice. We would like to see those two in the same subsidiary ledger. So that's going to be our goal. This isn't really a problem as long as we are aware of it, that, that we have kind of a, our receivables are lower, are understated, and our liabilities are overstated. And again, if we were to make generally accepted accounting principle financial statements that we report to outside users, we would want to make that adjustment, in, in, which would uh, increase the accounts receivable and increase the liability, reporting these out separately rather than netting them together in the accounts receivable. So again, there's pros and cons to a system like this, but it's a, a system that, that will be set up like other types of systems that will help us with the logistics well, and then we can adjust them on a periodic basis as we create the financial statements at the end of the period. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.